Hello, folks. Welcome to the True Media Roundtable. I have uh, five special guests with me today, and we're going to discuss important topics related to natural law. Um, my name's Chris Jansen, if I didn't already say that, and my website's endevil.life, and you can find my work there and at the One Great Work Network. Um, I'm just going to have everybody introduce themselves quickly. We'll go around. Um, I'll start with Nathan. Hi, uh, my name is Nathan Ribble. Um, well, I've been here talking with a couple of friends here now with Chris and Will, and as well with other people like Aaron, uh, now Lisa and Corey. So uh, I was here, you know, just with uh, Chris and Chris was um, invited me to do the uh, to do the round table from Mark's uh, class that we took uh, last year. Uh, it was a really good class and I'm really excited to join this conversation. Right on. Glad you came. It's good to see you. And um, let's go to Aaron. How's it going, everybody? Aaron Butler. Um, most of the time I'm going to be behind the scenes on the One Great Work Network doing some producer roles and uh, hopefully getting on the content creation side uh, here pretty soon. And uh, yeah, just I was in the uh, How to Become the True Media seminar as well. And uh, Nathan, it's great. I'm glad to have you here. Uh, and yeah, looking forward to this discussion. I, I don't know what happened, Aaron, but your screen like turned green. You're in it green. Is it still green? Yeah. It's been it went, doing that. Totally I green. It's wild. I really have I no idea. Not, it was not green to me. Memory. Oh my God. <laughs> Looks good. Purple. Yeah, oh, go. it looks good from you guys. Yeah, I yeah. Don't know. It went away. Oh. Whatever you did, fixed it. So weird. I didn't do anything. <laughs> Probably a, a local glitch. It's been. It happened. It's the second time it's happened. I don't know why. Yeah, yeah. Those I'll damn in internet, internet gremlins, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah we'll, we'll work with it. Um, yeah. Let's go to Leslie next. Hi, I'm Leslie Powers. I am um, friends with Will and Chris, and I've uh, been really um, inspired by the. Um, opportunity to interact with them and have been inspired to start some of creating some of my own content and wanting to um, participate in these conversations. I'm really excited actually listening to the previous um, conversations you guys have had and but like chomping at the bit to want to share and participate. So that's why I'm here today. Um, in terms of my background in, is a, in work, I work as a um, social worker and, and clinical counselor. So I have a investment in helping people to do their own personal work and then having um you know listen to mark has his work over the almost the last three years a little less than three years ago is when i was introduced i'm super inspired by his work so my uh endeavor is to combine you know the psychological um and change the work of psychological change and doing self-work with the philosophy of natural law right on yeah. Well, thanks for coming, Leslie. Yeah, glad to be here. Um, Corey. Hey, how's it going? My name's Corey. Just a fellow human being, a messenger, you know, trying to uh, see what actions could be done in the name of truth. You know, it's something a lot of people, um, you know, question on a day-to-day -day basis. You know, what could I do in my day-to-day -day life? What could I do uh, for this? Um, you know, they feel passionate. They see the value and and the knowledge that a lot of you guys share with natural law. And so, you know, a lot of my work is often focused on, well, what can we do, um, you know, with that knowledge, how can we bring it out to more people? And I'm gonna to continue to show others how we can do that. And also how we could teach it in different ways. Cause that's another question, you know, how do you teach this knowledge to other people? You know, if it's so simple at the end of the day, but yet it's so complex, how do we bring it to people? And that could be a challenge for some people because they see how much it opens their eyes to everything. And then they get involved with all these little rabbit holes and they get all mixed up. So uh, I think, you know, with all of us here, I think we could also provide more guidance to all the topics at hand. And so I appreciate you guys always, you know, bringing us all here and all the topics, you know, Chris and Will, I appreciate it. Um, I'm just a, a health coach. So kind of like uh, Leslie, I, I actually did a lot of consult consulting in the past and had my own like business and so forth um 
I still actually do that. Um, it's something I've a little postponed as of late lately because I focus more on natural law and bringing that to people as I see it as very, very important, if not more important than nutrition. But of course, they're intertwined, um, you know, health and natural law. I um, you know, I say natural law heals the world, you know, natural healing, natural health heals the body. It's very important, microcosmic, macrocosmic, that we heal both worlds and uh, it's totally possible, but it starts with the conversation. It starts with the idea, the thought that it is possible. And then we put into action through understanding the knowledge of the actions themselves, not just the knowledge itself. Thank you. Right on. I love how you can just spit that all out, Corey. Good job. Um, Will, you want to give yourself a little introduction? Yeah. What's up, brothers and sisters? Uh, Will Keller from the Bay Area, California. And uh, my website's naturalfreedomleague.com. I'm also a feather, uh, fellow seeker. And uh, kind of how Corey said, uh, my job is to simplify the profound and talk about nature, the causal factors, and how they correspond with uh, consciousness and, uh, and other beings. So I'm looking forward to this, uh, this convo tonight. Right on. You do a good job of it too, don't you, Will? Mm. <laughs> um, and looks like we have a, a new new um new face here i haven't met uh ronnie Ronnie's yet. awesome <laughs> what's uh, up ronnie what's welcome uh what's going on guys is the audio can you hear me yeah, yeah. hey coming in good all right cool. just uh, do I'm a gonna... little intro uh introduce yourself uh yeah i'm ronnie ross um i basically have been introduced to you guys and so many other people through Corey. um which was all through Mark Passio, um, learning about natural law. And uh, I guess, I don't know if you guys have noticed, but it seems to me like ever since Mark, if you're familiar with his work, uh, threatened to burn the whole thing to the ground, uh, people have been coming out, the, out of the woodwork try, uh, teaching natural law and trying to spread the, the message. So I would consider myself also uh, a student and a teacher of natural law. And that uh is what i'm trying to do with my podcast and show which uh i just started i'm only on episode two so oh awesome. cool right. what's the name of your show uh the rfrp the ronnie fucking ross podcast all right <laughs> <laughs> love it love it <laughs> cool right on well good to have you here man i'm glad you came and um you guys were hitting on kind of the point i was gonna make today um for subject matter is you know, I was thinking about know thyself is sort of some of the oldest, most um, universal wisdom. And I think it's pretty much key to um, making the changes that we all want to see in the world. And it's something that we can all agree on that ourselves and folks who might be listening to us talk, um, we can work on changing ourselves from the inside. And that can have a huge effect on the world outside of us and around us. So to start off, um, let's go in that same order. We'll start with Nathan again. And let's just talk a little bit about what ego is and what that means to you. All right, so, well, what ego means to me, I feel that uh, ego has a real tool, a real use in, in life. And for me, uh, a very loose understanding from Going from psychology and uh, coming from you know mainstream psychology, it could be uh, seen as a uh, as a part of yourself. And there's th there's a couple parts of yourself. There's a self that uh, you have uh, used every single day that you can you know show to people and you can you know interact with people. Then there's the internal self, where it's like a a part of you that wants a little bit more. And sometimes it's um, that tool is called the ego. And the ego. Really, sometimes when it, it can be, like I say, it can be uh, used as a tool. Uh, really, you know, really has profound use when going to, uh, you know, say, okay, I'm gonna start and actually do something with my with myself. For instance, if I want to go upstairs and make a sandwich, I have to actually do it myself. I'm not, I'm not. It's not gonna, you know, I'm gonna start thinking about it. I'm, I'm gonna start using myself, and just not gonna really manifest. But when it comes to, you know, say like, oh, I want my my, my mother to make it for me no like i mean I, ha I have to you know have my own volition to think for myself and act for myself and uh when it comes to when it comes to that i can say you know all all the things that i want about um 
the ego. Um, yeah, I feel like the, the, the points that I'm getting at when it comes to really acting out in the world, uh, ego for me, uh, you know, so, sometimes oh, it's, it's really hard to really formulate some thoughts sometimes, but I figure it's really it's simpler than I think it is. Because a lot of times when I think about ego, I, I'm like, oh, you got you have like a stuck up ego, like stuck up meaning, you know, you know, it really, it really just, it's harder, it's harder for me to describe, I figure, because, you know, my ego is like, okay, can I really do this? And if I, if I think I can, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to act like I can, that's like performing. So it's like, you know, really, like, I know very little about the ego yet. At the same time, you know, I use it every day. I don't know. I can show my ego. And that's like, if I'm showing my ego, it's like, wait, I don't really want to do that. It's like, it's like a little bit of vulnerability right there. And so vulnerability for me is like, you know, all that I want to be. I want to be me. And at the same time, that is, that's also the ego. That is, that's. Yeah. So I, I think that's a good uh kind of a good way to put it uh and you mentioned the ego being a tool uh, <clears throat> and i think it's probably one of you know it, it's the first tool it's it's the ego is how our consciousness can per perceive the distinction between the outer and the inner it's what separates us from the outer world and uh, i think the, the book that I found on the arc and it was the arcane formulas of mental alchemy. And they mentioned a concept called, uh, egohood and it distinctioned, um, the, like the lowercase ego and egohood as being, um, ego being the accept, the, you know, the awareness of the ego and the personality. And, um, a lot of, you know, we associate the ego with our persona and um, who we think we are, whereas I think egohood um, differentiates the individuality rather than just separateness. So it's it's egohood is coming to awareness of the many personas and that you actually are individuated from the, um, you know, uh, uh, from the persona, from the mask, you're, it's, it's a tool to recognize anything, basically, we couldn't accept, where we couldn't be conscious of anything if we weren't, didn't have the polarity between um, ourselves and the, comp you know, to compare it to what's outside of us. Um, mm -hmm. And so I think that a misconception about ego is that it's all bad, whereas, you know, destroy the ego, no ego, no problems, whereas you can have a lot of problems by by trying to remove remove your ego too much and um i i think that there is a you know obviously a valid um um you know you can have egohood and be and know who you are and in order to step into your you who you are you have to be able to um know uh you know 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 where you actually are individuated from all these um names and uh all these you know, you, you're the, the ego will put things in boxes and boxes and boxes after boxes. And you have to be able to differentiate where you are, um, behind the external and behind the, um, the, the separation that, that we see. That's kind of where, where I think I'll leave the ego con you know, there's a lot to it. There's so many ways yeah. that you can go off and, um, kind of examine it but i think egohood is something that's missing because we try to destroy it too much and are afraid of it rather than trying to you know pinpoint why we have certain people or why we have um certain ego holdups you know it's an unconscious thing if you if anyone thinks they're going to be able to just get rid of their ego good luck you know jump in leslie let's hear what you got um, so this, these are the thoughts I have. So ego is that which separates or distinguishes us from other beings, other things. It's how we know ourselves as a unique and separate individual. It, it is support, helps form, a, form our identity. So I see ego as being formed in relationship to other things. So like, like God, experiencing itself through us in all of our diversified forms through our separation, our egos, we, our egos get to know ourselves through our, our separate parts. 
and um, by seeing how they interact, right? So the ego functions as a protector and a defender of self, a goal setter and an organizer. It has a function. Um, Freud talks about ego as a mediator between the id or our impulses and the superego, which is our moral ideals. I, I see it as a, you know, in my work that the human mind compartmentalizes itself you know, in these many roles and masks that we wear, that we have all sorts of um, parts of ourselves that are not always in unison, they're not always communicating. And the ego optimally can be a facilitator, right? Seated at the head of that table, listening to all the parts of ourself, seeing ourself within our personality structure. Um, I was thinking about the idea of awakened ego as a source of our personal power, um, our awakened ego as a sort of our mastery, a balanced lens to view ourselves in the world through. And then, of course, we can talk about how when we're out of balance, you know, um, where there's too much of the other parts, you know, dominating, right? So the ego can, can go and have extremes, right? Where maybe it separates too much from the that which it's not right there. Awesome. Thanks, Leslie. That was great. Corey? Hey, yeah. So um, very good points. And I think Aaron mentioned a lot of um, like uh, points sort of with the conflict between ego and uh, non-ego. But there's there's a lot of compartments to this. And I don't like to make things sound generalized, but ego um, can be perceived by some folks as um, left brain imbalance, but it could be on both left brain and right brain imbalance. It could also be perceived as not enough inaction, um, you know, with that of which is described in the Tao teaching, for example, uh, and other forms. But I think, you know, I think it's important to mention some of the uh, the big elephants in the room when it comes to ego. So um, not that it's like left brain or right brain, but rather, yes, it is the extremes among them that will ego will attach to. Um, now, let's also not get ego um, sort of mixed up with uh, confidence, right? And um, wanting to move forward, uh, you know, with a good head on your shoulders. But then there's the expression, well, you have too big of a head, you know, too big of a mouth, you know, and that's when you take things to the extreme, where maybe you're talking too much, maybe you're not listening enough, thus, maybe you're seeking too much attention. A lot of folks who are in the modern day and age who are on social media, uh, very much follow this egotistical mindset, you know, whether they even um, know so or not. Um, by seeking attention by other folks. Um, you know, they may complain about what's happening on social media and they're not just reporting the facts, they're actually looking for um, people to give them attention. It depends on that intention uh, then in such case. So um, I'm just saying that there is a lot of narcissism when it comes to um, online behavior in the modern day and age with folks looking for that type of um, egotistical system. But you have the question, you know, where is this ego coming from? Why is it something important to look at? And how does it build? Uh, so I say the biggest factors that we have here playing with our ego are the systems that are basically built on ego. And if you look at the systems that are built on ego, it's very often the hierarchical systems. <laughs> the pyramid system in its very nature is one built on ego. It has the I, the I, the self at the top of the pyramid. And one may embrace that knowledge and use it over others. They are being God themselves. They feel they have the power to rule over another mm -hmm. human being. Thus, they put away their empathy and care for their own natural rights and their own ability to have the same knowledge that they do. They keep it for themselves and use it against the others. So, that is the biggest problem we have in today's world. And that's not just across government, but it's across uh, the police institutions uh, that are also built in that such a system. Um, and basically all the main institutions that are attached to the system we call government 
um, because they are all based on the same pyramid hierarchical structure. It is not like a typical hierarchy that you'll see with a family or with um, you know, a workplace it doesn't work necessarily the same way. There's a higher, higher ego to this because there's many, many compartments to it, right? There's many, many bricks and people are detached from, from um, one another and they're put in darkness. There's, we can go over the hierarchy system if you want. It's a whole nother topic. But um, the point I'm trying to say is that these systems tend to be built in ego or left brain dominance, but those are not two one and the same. Uh, ego tends to, like I say, attract to those brain imbalances uh, when we fall toward it. Because somebody can believe by meditating all day, they're not embracing ego, but they could still be embracing ego. And I've had talks with people about this too, because you know there's a lot of spiritual folks um, who have those practices and they know it helps them feel better in today's world. And that's perfectly fine. Um, what I'm saying is the deliberate use of it um, you know, when they know they should probably be doing something else or take a little bit of action in their life, uh, like Leslie says, it's, it's a bit of the, the balance between um, inaction and action or left brain and right brain. Um, having one or the other um, can fall to an extreme and thus fall to ego, but it doesn't necessarily guarantee it. So that's why I actually have a video titled, um, Let Go of My Ego, Let Go Into The Eco. You notice the words I use, my and the you know, what is all around us? Or what if it's only just us? What if we're just solipsist? We're only thinking about ourselves, only thinking about what we can pertain to the knowledge of the self and not the knowledge of the external world. And so I say, let's go, you know, let's go into the eco. Um, because that system works as a circle, not as like a rigid um, triangle, but that the triangle is not of synthesis. So that triangle of hierarchy is, is a broken triangle, obviously, since there's a, a part that's detached from the rest. You know, what we're looking for is a triangle that combines the, you know, all the angles together, um, one that is complete and whole. Thus, you know, the circle archetype is whole. It, it represents unity. It represents um, bringing people together. So we can get mixed with um, archetype in this process as well when it comes to uh, hierarchy. But to distinguish, yes, I, the circle archetype is to represent even the triangle archetype when it's fulfilled, when it's holistic. Um, so same thing with the brain, right? If it's holistic, the whole brain, we're not just looking at the left or right brain, we're looking at the whole brain. Um, and it is not something that you can perfect, which is why so many people may focus on ego or feel like that that is the main thing to everything. Um, but of course, that's not always the case, and it does depend on how we look at it. Thanks, Corey. Mm -hmm. That's that was a um, a mind a mind load right there. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot to think about in one quick um, spurt there. Um, let's go to Will. Will, what do you got? Yeah, man, a lot of good points you guys were talking about. I'm going to try to make make this super simple. So. When I'm talking about ego, it's not the uh, the inflated self-importance ego, right? Egotistical. We're talking about this is the conscious persona that we have as an individual. So I know that I'm going to put the glass of water to my mouth and not someone else's mouth. And this is our whole personality is based on the ego and also um Everything that we're conscious about is filtered through the ego. This is the, the center of our field of awareness. And it's important because we don't want to identify with the ego, right? And this is where we get in the ego identification where I am my job or I am this, I am these masks that I wear. I am this type of personality. And when that happens, then the ego is dominant. The, the ego needs to be used as a tool uh, to control. If you don't have that, that's why the new age deception of destroy the ego, you can never destroy the ego in this physical realm. Uh, it can't happen. But what you can do is have it take control. And then you will actually you won't be able to filter out your instinctual um, behaviors, you're going to be more of an animalistic uh, state of mind. And that's where selfishness comes in. It's all about me, take, take, take. And all these, these dark aspects start to arise. 
and and take control. So uh, it's important to, you know, we're obviously trying to make the unconscious conscious and having full control over the ego and working with the ego is extremely important to do that. So instead of destroying it, unify it and control it. Nice. I like that. Thanks, Will. And let's go to um, Ronnie. Um, <laughs> you guys uh, crushed it. I, there's, <laughs> Is there anything left? It, it, it might be a hard pass, man. It's like, <laughs> oh. Uh, That's all I've, good. I've been learning so much from you guys. I'm so grateful that Corey invited me to this to begin with. So It's hard yeah. to go first and it's hard to go last too. <laughs> yeah, last gets to be kind of tough because everybody's put out so much. Um, yeah. But, you know, if something comes to you, um, feel free to jump in if you want to say something else about the ego. What, where I was going to go with that, and I'm kind of surprised actually to hear everybody's reply because so often the ego is, is talked about in a negative connotation. And I think that's like egotism or um, egocentricism, you know, where people are so caught up in, in their, um, their own ego that it's like solipsism you know where they think the whole world revolves around their their self and that's a common problem in our society but i liked hearing so many of you kind of talking about the other aspects of the ego as being this you know the awareness or the consciousness the arbitrator the the part of us that that sees what we're doing and and tries to balance it out you know and um one, one other aspect of that that occurred to me is, you know, we, we last week we were talking about belief and throughout life, all the things that happen to us and the things we do, we form these, um, this picture of who we are. Uh, and, and it's our, our, um, and people say things like, oh, I'm no good at this, or I'm no good at that. And you're, you know, you hear a, a young person say that, like, I remember my own daughter saying, Oh, I'm no good at this. I can't do that. And I'm like, how do you know? You have never even tried. You know, how have you formed this idea about who you are when every moment that's passing is changing? You're, you're not even the same being you were. You know, science says your whole body changes in seven years. Every part of it has been reformed. So in every moment is a new moment. So you really can't be something that you were before. Um, before we started this um, meeting, Nathan was mentioning Eckhart Tolle. Tolle, I never get his last name quite right, but you know, the practice of the presence is something I think of, of being in the moment and kind of being aware that there's a, an observer, a part of yourself that can sit back and notice what you're doing and being like, oh, I don't like when I do that. You know, and, and I think that's important to start recognizing that there are these different layers to the self and that we can observe and regulate and center ourselves. We don't have to be locked into what people think we are or what we previously thought we were because of actions in the past. So that's kind of my little take on the ego. And I think it's a good place to go from there is to sort of talk about selfishness and selflessness. My recent work, um, I just was working on the idea of collectivism, and I'm trying to explain in this that, um, you know, like a lot of people think socialism is a great idea, or, um, you know, communism could work, you know, this, this whole Marxist idea that, that if we all work together and we all share, uh, that would be utopia. But the truth is that it never works out. You know, there's always some ruler and they start forcing us to do things and, and they feed people to the cannons and machine guns and they don't care about the individual. And so the way we avoid being, you know, just um, death by machine gun or winding up in a prison or, or locked down is by maintaining our, our individuality. But on the other side of that, there's this important thing of being selfless. So let's talk a little bit about the balance of selfishness and selflessness. Um, same order. Go ahead, Nathan. All right. So when I think of selfishness, 
So we'll start with selfish being. So okay. if I were to be selfish, I would say, um, if there's a plate of cookies, I could take all the cookies and leave you one, or leave you maybe half a cookie. You know, that's being very selfish and honestly very greedy for me for myself. And so if I were to say, if I wanted to be very selfless, I'd I'd take no, I'd take you know you have them, you know you you take them. And I guess there's a sort of a you know a dualism in that when it comes to you know if I don't get anything, that's not really you know it's like a giving society on going a little too far. And that's where I feel like people are getting the idea, like the uh, Zeitgeist Project Venus or something like that talks about, you know, everyone gives. And if, if it was a giving society, you know, what would we have? You know, if we give all of ourselves, then you know, what, what do we have? And I think the best thing to say is, you know, if we can be selfless with our words, you know, being kind. And I feel like with that, you, you know, that in, in the acts that nobody sees, like imagine if you were to go out and do something that no one else would see who else would see that yourself you know i could be selfless in the acts of saying cleaning off my boss's car and no one ever knowing at the same time i could be selfish and in, in, you know speed off and you know kick some kick some dirt into someone else's car and causing them ill so you know there's there's certain acts i think a lot of this deals with acts so because a lot of times you know um i'm not sure if this in other uh mammals or anything like that but if we are really close to really the only ones that can really perceive things like this on a, on, a, on a third person basis. Like I can take my consciousness and actually observe myself in the corner of the room and realize, you know, my actions in certain cases, you know, and determine myself if I'm, you know, if I'm kind or if I'm not kind or if this feels good or if it doesn't feel good. And, you know, it kind of involves pretty much the whole being. The spirit, like the, the physical body, like if I get little tinglys in my stomach of, of, a, of a selfless or selfish act, my emotions, like if I'm getting all flustered or from like my, you know, in combination with my breathing patterns and things like that. At the same time, I can engage my mental abilities because then it, you know, it, there's a level of communication. And then at the same time, you know, not I'm thinking about things. It's a very spiritual thing. It could be intuition involved. Um, and with that, I, I feel like, um, you know, o overall feeling of it a lot is um, defining levels of where property and ownership have in the world of being, you know, if there is an availability, you know, I could have, you know, all these guns, all these foods, all this, all these resources. And then what, what, what am I doing it for? I might as well, you know, the, the wording in my, in my case, this is just me. I might as well, you know, give to other people because, because of my abundance, because of my efforts is just, I guess the, who I am, it makes up who I am. And at the same time, I, the, who I am still wants a lot of this stuff. So I'm not going to be too overly giving or too overly selfless in that case. And there's, there's a, there's a level of balance involved. Yeah. That's, see that that's balance a, theme coming up. Go ahead, Aaron. That was a big one is, is that, um, you know, having the balance between when, when you're actually being selfish and when you're being selfless, it's, a really um, for individually it's something that that takes a lot of um, you know like it's all part of the self work you have to know when you're actually being selfish because you could think of something like um, maybe one person actually thinks that he has you know it, that's because you mentioned socialism um, Chris and so it kind of goes into the sense it's like okay well 48 like if someone wanted 40 acres and a mule right well some people like the community or the collective might say that's too much or and then the the individual might say well i'm i'm alive just like anyone else and i have the right to earn and keep what i have so no one can tell me when i'm being really selfish or or selfless unless i'm stealing you know so um i think it's a, a very a personal aspect and i think that the the lower self or like the lower the lower ego um can be selfish or it can be uh selfless you can be so selfless that you're trying to speak for everyone or you're try you've forgotten who you are totally in the collective and every one of your decisions is after some um you know it, it's you've essentially lo lost yourself or and vice versa you could go so far being selfish that you've lost um your ability to be selfless and consider others uh and so 
I think I think that um, yeah, the the big balance is um, finding out where you know um, you're 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 gonna realize when you're when you're doing one or the other, um, you know, by just the results. You're gonna you're gonna get results that um, are productive or they're not productive or they're not what you were after. And so then it's going to take the person to to decide and find the balance and find their higher self where they can reward and treat themselves and from what they, you know, they earned and have deserved, but also they're not taking from someone else because that I think that is where the selfish side starts to to come in. Awesome. Thanks, Aaron. Let's go to Leslie. I was thinking about selfishness from the idea of egotism, right? With the definition being the practice of talking and thinking about oneself excessively because of an undue sense of self-importance, right? And then thinking about the ego, what happens when we separate the ego, that facilitator, that consciousness too much from other parts of ourself or from other living beings? when we lose sight of our connectedness within ourself and with outside of ourself. So when we wall off that part of ourself too much, then we, there's the tendon, the, the risk of becoming solipsistic, right? Psychopathic, morally relativistic, egotistical. And those defenses become uh, activated in the fight aspect perhaps you know um and then selflessness i think about when the boundaries of self are too diffuse um unformed there we're not filtering enough of me versus not me um it, it can be dangerous as well this is where people are are um at risk of martyrdom codependency gullibility um, being becoming easily manipulated, um, you lose yourself, no boundaries, right? Um, right brain imbalance. I was thinking about how, um, you know, trauma, you know, the triune brain and how trauma is used in a sense to, to exploit the ego right? Ego as a defense mechanism, as a way of protection over protection, as a way of if you feel threatened, you know, and you know, you think that everybody walking around you is a threat to you, then that ego becomes over activated and we forget our unity, those separateness occurs, right? So um, I think there's an interaction between how trauma or chronic stress interplays with this polarization of selfishness, selflessness, and where is this balance? And how do we hold our center through self-awareness, right? That state of consciousness, um, keeping our sense of self, protecting that sense of self from that balance point. Great, great points. Thanks, Leslie. Um, Corey. Yeah, that's great. Uh, you guys mentioned really good points. Um, so, Chris, you mentioned the word uh, egocentricism. I think it makes it even more particular as to what we're talking about than, um, you know, when we're looking at, like, perhaps the negative connotation, right? Because now we're adding the word centricism around it, which means that the whole world revolves around you, sort of like that picture, right? You know, on uh, one of Mark Passio's natural law slides with the uh, solipsism, the whole universe, everything surround, surrounds me, you know, I'm the center of the universe. That's like the egocentricism. So, you know, one may say, well, that's a balance because you're finding a center, <laughs> but no, it's not a balance. So, you know, the balance is internal, external, micro, macro, as we've mentioned, and Leslie mentioned basically a, a a dozen examples there of different uh, things that are of need of balance. Uh, so there's so much there. And then even like you guys mentioned masks. I don't know if you guys noticed, but multiple of you guys mentioned like uh, how society wears masks um, to sort of uh, crowd their identity in different ways. I think there, we have a, an identity crisis 
on our hands, at least for the majority of the population, like I said, you know, people living up to certain expectations, expectations by whom, you know, is it themselves? And then you have to question, well, that could be for ego, even though it's not for themselves, it's for somebody else, um, but they only care about their own image. So thus it's still ego. Um, so situations like that, you know, you obviously have to explore a little bit deeper. Where is the ego? Get to the root cause. You know, why are you feeling this way? The question of why. Why is someone committing a certain action? So when you say socialism, right, most people think, oh, well, this isn't egocentric because everybody's working together. Everybody's putting in money, uh, you know, at the same expenses or whatnot. Um, but that's not the case. It's still a hierarchical system, still follows the pyramid system completely, because there is still people that you're dependent on for making the rules and keeping everything, you know, secure and asking for permission to, uh, to basically do everything that you want to do. So even if that is the case among the general populace for paying this or paying that, it matters not because that system is still in place. And yes, it will corrupt over time naturally, like you mentioned, Chris, how it's not going to uh, ever work out uh, because it is simply unnatural for a human being to rule over another human being. Uh, you know, for me to w have full ownership over somebody else, talk about ego. <laughs> Everybody is entitled to their own life. Everyone has their own life. They own themselves. And so part of being helpful and helping another person is taking the sacrifice, which I think is the word that kind of sums up the, the idea of, of helpfulness and the selflessness, selfless. You're taking away the self. You're moving on to somebody else. You're saying, here, I'm going to help you instead of helping myself. So you are helping them. You're giving the sacrifice of your time and attention, the spiritual currency, to give them help, whatever it may be. So that is a sacrifice. And notice it's not in the lens of necessarily dying. Everybody thinks sacrifice is, you know, maybe by those means, but the allegoric, you know, sacrifice, doing something out of your time, out of your energy for your care, the eighth generative principle of natural law. And care, I don't see care often being associated with ego. Why? Because if you're going to care something, what are you going to care about? You're going to care about something else, something other than yourself. Or unless you care about yourself, then that's, that could be ego. Could I say it could it's because it doesn't, you still should care about yourself. You should care about your health. You should care about your life. You should care about what you do in this life and how you impact others, how you help them. Actually, how you, how you be selfless, you need to be conscious yourself. You need to have that mind yourself. So in order to help someone else, in order to be selfless, you need to have some sort of conscious of self. And I think that's where the balance really strikes in. Mm -hmm. So socialism, you know, this word social and adding an ism to it, like we do with many isms, are often twisted into so many different ways. And I think um, even just a simple word language can catch people uh, on that. But uh, I think ego, most people can generally understand what it is. I think moreover, though, it is the harder explanation to have to describe why the systems that be and why all, everything around us has been formed out of ego. And that is why we have to leave it if we truly want to care for the world that we live in, if we truly want to sacrifice, give our courage and dedication, our time and energy towards something that actually matters, which is simply our own lives and not pushing onto others, our own ideologies or pushing onto others, um, you know, this sense of ego of having certain knowledge. Oh, he, he, I have something that he doesn't. Oh, you know, I, uh, you know, it's just, it's childishness. Um, and that's why some children can be very arrogant. You see some of the, the similar um, traits uh, with egotism, which could be arrogance or self selfishness, as you mentioned. So um, that's why I think we're breaking it down. And I think that's good. Um, I'm not saying that children will fall to that. Some children would be very you know, helpful, but um, things, things can happen, right? Where, yeah, we, sh we should help our child and help them see things. There was another thing I was going to mention, but I kind of forgot. I, I will go back to it if I remember. Um, there was, there was a round. small thing. Yeah, yeah maybe <laughs> it'll round. pop back up. Yeah, let's go to Will next. Cool. Um, yeah, th this is a, a good question. So when we see selfishness, that's that can go back to um, being ego dominant, right dominant. And 
uh, it's funny because the ego always wants to push push separation, right? And it's because it's all about the the individual. And we can actually see this manifest in the aggregate of humanity with government, right? Because the external control is a perfect example of a selfish society where people are ego dominant in their minds. Uh, selflessness would be some, and that doesn't mean that you, you don't care about yourself or even that you're putting someone up before your own personal well being. I see it as more like you understand unity consciousness. You understand that at the core of all of us, we are one family, the, the, the source of consciousness. And we understand that uh, if one suffers, all suffers. So you have the care and the respect to you know, to help another person, you know, without any kind of, um, you know, requirement um, back. So and that is that would be on the the opposite polarity of government external control and slavery, we will see freedom and care and cooperation and a voluntary society. So, you know, ego and the higher self and selfishness and selflessness kind of go, go hand in hand. It's, it's, a great, uh, it's, it's a great example. And we can use that to uh, see what's going on in, in the, the bigger picture in the world. Yeah, and there, it's weird how intertwined all these um, ideas are. It's, it's a little tricky to, to um, sort through them. It, do you have any thoughts on this one, Ronnie? Um, yeah, I mean, I, uh, I can definitely speak to, uh, selfishness for sure. Um, I was raised an only child and I know very well what it is to be selfish and, uh, to just be consumed in yourself. And for someone that, you know, has been in this hippie jam band community with the LSD and mushrooms and just thinking we're woke as can be and you know having that ego about ourselves about what we've seen in these you know vision quests we've been on uh I don't think I really noticed how selfish I was until I had a child I I mean it like blew me away I was like oh my god I've like this it's like, I, I need, I need to do that. I want to do that. I need to do that. And it's like, uh, what's more important, man. <laughs> you know, Kids like you've that, got someone else sure. that's, that's depending on you. That's none of that is important anymore. It just, you need to throw. And it's like, all right, here we go. You know? And you know, I'm granted, I'm able to, uh, be selfless, but it's just interesting to, to witness that in my own life, you know, and I think that I've had an ego about myself thinking that I'm an extremely selfless person. And when <laughs> come to find out, you're like, oh, wow, not really, <laughs> not really at all. New age. <laughs> I mean, you know, granted, I've had my moments of selflessness. Um, you know, as we all have, I mean, you try to help people when you can and uh that can be the smallest of anything i mean something that always got me as a kid growing up in uh catholic church was uh the story of the lady <clears throat> a lady that goes to church and uh she only has a penny to her name and she donates the penny and everyone sees and kind of scoffs at her whereas you know everyone else is just laying down money you know and it's like it was the power the the moral of the story is the power of intention you know what are you intending to do what you know what is the purpose behind the action and and that's what matters ultimately you know and I, i've got an ego about being right I'll tell you that, especially from like listening to so much Mark Passio over the last three and a half, four years. I mean, I don't know about you guys, but I've listened to natural law seminar like seven times. I'm listening to it for the eighth time, the dissidents, the neo-feminist agenda. I mean, I'm just like constantly, it's like, yeah, fuck all these other podcasts. I'm just going to replay that 
while I'm at work. And I'm just like every day trying to soak it in because it's so much information. But the core issue of, of egotism, of selfishness, of, uh, or at least what it leads to or what it has led to is this idea that other people have authority over other people. And I, I mean, it's, I'm sure it's, you know, talking to the birds and this group of people because of, you know, <laughs> especially of what you guys have already said. I'm like, oh my God, where are you people? Why don't you live down the street? You know, but uh, so, I, yeah, I mean, I don't want to ramble. I can, I'm a talker, <laughs> you know, so. But, but you I, know, uh, being the last one, you just knocked it out of the park. Yeah. Man. That, that, <laughs> that hit home with me because I remember that same realization with kids and my kids. And, and I think it's funny how, um, speaking of Corey's nature is the answer. Um, nature has this built-in mechanism to help us realize our true place in the universe when we have children, because <laughs> it's, it's like a real slap in the face, you know? And the, and the other thing I've thought about is I've come across this recently, a, an interview I was listening to and um, I've seen it before in documentaries when you hear about um, like an Aboriginal culture, um, people that haven't been immersed in modern society, people that live together in nature, they seem to have this more innate sense of sharing where things don't aren't necessarily owned. You know, you could be in someone else's hut and be like, oh, I like that piece of fur right there. And they're like, oh, OK, yeah. well, I guess you'll take it for a while and you have it. And you hear stories of explorers showing up and the natives just showing up and start taking their stuff because they're, as far as they were concerned, that's how we do, you know? And, <laughs> you know, it, to me, it kind of ties into this, you know, my, my idea here with the tree of life that all things are connected. All life is connected at the root. And there really isn't all this space between us. And modern society has put up all these walls and fragmented us into these boxes and like Corey's talking about the hierarchy you know and um it's a weird balance because if you're too selfless and you're willing to just have no self at all let someone else control yourself you're a slave you know you're an utter slave because you have no self so you don't want to be completely selfless but on the other hand you know if you're too selfish if you, if you you know it's good to care about yourself like you guys were saying and have self-care but if you're too selfish to the point where you're not even paying attention to everything else that's connected around you, then um, you become an authoritarian or a, you're stealing. You're stealing other people's time and energy because you're not taking the time to share what is natural, you know, that, that this space that we're all sharing and that we all need each other and we all need things that each other have. So. So, yeah, I guess I really, um, the thing that really hit on me, those people um, bringing up the balance aspect there and how. Um, it's all about it. The middle you know, path. Because the, uh -huh. the hierarchy was formed like, you know, 5,000 years ago, you know, I'm saying like the any tribe was built based on imbalance, you know, certain right. people having certain resources more than others. They take it from the tribe and they use it for themselves. They, you know, they're manipulating others. And that's how, that's how everything started. But it can't continue if people know their rights. It can't continue if people know the law. And that is the and, idea. And then that's perfect what you're saying, because that is a bridge to the last um, topic I wanted to end on, which was um, something Leslie brought up, which is intuition. And I think intuition is the missing tool, the missing ingredient to sort of sort all this out in a lot of ways and what our modern culture seems to be forgetting about because we get so left-brained and so materialistic and looking for answers from someone else from some other source from some authority and where a lot of times the answer is in ourself and using our intuition so let's kind of try to make this last round um kind of quick because we're getting close to a, to an hour All right. but um just talk a little bit about intuition all right, so I think uh, when it comes to intuition, I've had a lot of personal experience, uh, especially just developing it and seeking it out. I've, it wasn't really like a, here, you need to do this, but it's more like, you know, it called to me. I don't know really if people here, you know, I, I bet people here have said, 
it called to me is really difficult say, saying. So um, it, intuition could be uh, anything from, you know, you know, going back and, you know, giving a little bit more of the tip or, or intuition could be like, oh, like, you know, you, 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 that, that reflex. So something with like the spidey senses. So when it comes to uh, intuition involving uh, when it comes to care, I feel like that really goes to the root of a person. You know, if one has a developed sense of care, that level of intuition is, you know, it flourishes. And I feel like that, you know, that really um, embodies, you know, what a good wholesome experience would, you know, on this on this earth really is. Love it. Hmm. Uh, yeah, uh, intuition. That's that's been a really really big one uh, for me, um, and I think intuition is one of those ones that could I don't know so intuition when you um, for me intuition comes in like uh, asking questions that are kind of like just come up maybe randomly or asking your own questions relying on your own inner compass to um, um, look out and and see um, you know intu intuition is a very um, obviously personal and it's a f it's it's more of a feeling than it is um um just just like a, a, a thing you know um and i think a really powerful part of my journey um was being able to it it seems selfish to go inward and to retreat from the external and i remember when i was going on my journey and looking in myself and and looking out there was that um i i left my family you know i went to a place that was kind of isolated and um i left my job and i left all these things that other people had made me believe that were so important and it wasn't until I took that maybe you know the appear it appeared selfish but the intention I think you know and, and what I really did was actually for the betterment of myself and for the betterment of of my community and my tribe um, and I think that intuition plays a huge role in combating maybe like a hyper intellectual thought because it's almost like intuition is that chaos compared to the order where we're looking at a situation and we think, oh, I have to act this way, that way, this way, that way. When in reality, your intuition is that personal, um, it's like, it's that personal, um, uh, you know, uh, that personal aspect, the chaotic aspect that, that you're free, you still are free to decide. And if you trust your intuition, then that can really be profound in leading you out of the hyper intellectual um, uh, mindset. And I can't remember who said it, um, maybe Jung, but it was the, the mission or the job of the psychoanalyst is to reunite the subject with their intuition. And I think that is um, a oh. really, really powerful powerful statement um and intuition and it, it's really close to self-knowing i think I'll, I'll try to wrap it up but um uh, ronald ronnie brought up um the psychedelic community and how they um you know they get the download but then they're kind of just there and they're in there with all this information and ego and the true the true journey is actually taking that knowledge that you've gained that insight and practicing it and and putting it into use and consolidating that rather than just knowing it you know what i mean um and so so i remember my experiences with psychedelics i haven't talked about them much but one of the most profound moments of my life was recognizing where um you know i am right and and i am i have i i'm allowed to say i'm right and i know where i'm right and i'm right about this much but you know like like that's acceptable and that's a powerful thing to be to to feel and say you know what there's all these things that i was told my whole life and this feeling this power this self realization um that's a place that every person should be in that sovereignty where where you're you trust your intuition you trust yourself you trust that you know and you do know you know about this much or whatever your block is or, you know um but yeah that's that's kind of where i'll go with intuition <laughs> You know, what's really cool is every time you get to talking, Aaron, everything around you turns green. It's like the Hulk, you know, your energy comes out. <laughs> yeah, I was wondering if anybody else saw that. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm not doing that. I really don't know why it's going on. It's all good. Go ahead, <laughs> Leslie. 
So this is stirring up a lot of thoughts and a lot of personal um, issues in a way, memories and uh, part of my own process. So I'm gonna try to summarize it without rambling. So the thought about being a mother, being a parent and being a mother, you know, and the stereotype of the good mother being selfless, right? And that, that really was a theme that came up in my life. And I think it also came up through how my past, my history of how I was in relationship, being, losing myself, let's say, in relationship. And and that process led to a lot of chaos and pain and problems, right? And actually went to a, a therapist once, you know, after um, an incident of violence in my relationship. And she said to me, but the only thing she said to me was, beware that you don't lose yourself. And so I had spent a lot of time in my future, like contemplating that, what does that mean? So when I finally, you know, I was ended up being married, had children, and I made a decision that I needed to leave that relationship. And what I was accused of, the, the, the thing that kept the mantra from my ex was, you're so selfish, you're so selfish, you're so selfish. And as I reflected on my life and my relationships, I realized that, um, that when I look back at every relationship, I had an intuition. I had a knowing that that just sort of popped into my, my consciousness about every relationship before I even like committed to it or went into it. And my, those intuitions were all right. They were correct. When I look back, I'm like, oh my God, my intuition was like spot on. But there's other parts of my brain that were discounting that intuition and confusing my, my decision-making and my process you know, and led to this like very circuitous, like crooked journey of learning to finally come to that point, like you were saying that like you come back to recognize that intuition is no, is true knowing yourself and, and um, that it is part of our protective mechanism too, and a way to not lose ourselves um, in the negative extreme, not in the positive sense of self listeners so you know in terms of being a mother a good mother I had to like really deal with this of when I made that decision that I had to figure out and um you know establish who I am it came in conflict with that belief of the good mother being selfless right and was used as a weapon against me and um but without having gone through that, my evolution wouldn't have, it wouldn't have brought me here, you know? Um, but, I, but in terms of intuition, I've come to recognize how important that is and to be very attuned. And, and because our thoughts can really take us astray. So I'll just start there. Awesome. I love the personal um, stories that really helps um, bring it home. Mm -hmm. Corey. Yeah. Awesome. Just had to make sure I'm not muted. <laughs> uh, awesome. Uh, Leslie, uh, thanks for sharing that. Um, you know, I wish I had a bit more uh, personal uh, sharing for that. And I'm sure I do. I'd have to pinpoint it. Um, but I do want to touch up because I don't want to make it too long. So uh, I do want to touch up on uh Chris's uh, point. So you're talking about like the tribes and stuff, right? And how they're more caring and so forth. It's also the result of less consumerism and materialism in general, um, which does feed um, from the systems that be, whereas in nature, it's not as emphasized. It will still take place and creativity will just blow out the water, uh, you know, when we live more in alignment with nature, nature, it would be incredible, but um, you would not see the extremes of consumerism and materialism as you see today. Uh, so I just want to make that point. And you were saying, you know, this is the answer. This is the answer. I'm like, just thinking in my head, nature is the answer. But anyways, <laughs> yeah. um, 
you, you know, you mentioned intuition. I think it's important to also associate that and creativity to uh, the right brain, which is an aspect, uh, obviously, of the world that a lot of people have been looking into, especially in the new age community, even though they might be a little too right brain extreme. Uh, it's why a lot of people have peaked into interest into uh, those type of communities, because the world is generally um, left brain and balanced, but it's both. Uh, it's just the world is generally left brain and balanced, as Mark Passio says. Um, and, you know, I, I even have a source uh, on my PowerPoint slide um, that you can find at nita.one advanced perspective. So anita.one slash advanced perspective, I have a slide um, about Gandhi, right? And how he took something called intuitive action. So kind of combining the left and right brain, we know left brain is more action oriented, more masculine, whereas the right brain is more feminine intuitive. Uh, so, you know, looking at, well, how could we take action based on truth? It kind of comes together perfectly when we say the word intuitive action. So we're thinking about what we're doing and we're putting out to the world. We're not just doing something baselessly without thinking. We're also not just thinking so much about everything and not doing anything. Uh, so those are two extremes, you know, going back to the whole idea of balance. And uh, I've also assimilated that to patience and ambition. So having the patience, listening and so forth is more of that intuition and the ambition is more of that outgoing. How do you bring the two? How do you bridge the two um, and so forth? And even as like Aaron said, internal monarchy, notice he's using the word internal, intuition, inter internal. So these are things we get from inside, looking in not so look always looking out because we can look we can learn from the world around us by also observing inside of us um and this is something we see even at a molecular level level especially with uh the principles of you know vibration and so forth right everything vibrates in the body there's energy and so forth um mentalism etc but internal sovereignty right is what uh but uh aaron uh, butler mentioned right internal monarchy so sovereignty having that intuition to lead ourselves um is very important and that's why even uh i say the word in nature so it's combined the word innate and in nature because we're looking inside our own nature human nature and looking at the world around us what is nature so in nature um what is innate are we looking and observing and learning from ourselves, from the world around us and looking at what's innate in the world around us and what's innate inside ourselves. Because if we learn what's innate inside ourselves, we know the blueprint to the body and thus we can heal the body by knowing its anatomy, by knowing how it works, by knowing how it digests. And then the same thing for the world. We wanna learn about the world, we learn about the innate uh, you know, alchemy, uh, you know, whatever you want to call it, of the world, right? So that could be natural law, all the laws that are existent, how everything interacts, how beings live in nature, um, you know, how we are to produce food and so forth, everything. It all is part of that anatomy. So, um, you know, I would, ex I would consider that the external anatomy and maybe, you know, if someone wants to call it astrology or whatever, there's so many connections you can make. And that just shows you the power of how much our ancestors looked into this idea of intuition because they had so much time to observe themselves and the world around them. People need to take the time nowadays to find that in themselves. They need to take the time to be patient, already utilizing that intuition. You know, maybe go out in nature or take some silence, listen, breathe, you know, try to find themselves. Um, and that is not, you know, crazy right brain extremism. It's something that every being should do if they want to be in that parasympathetic nervous system, the lax state of belly breathing, of um, being relaxed, reducing stress in a world that has, so, that has so much consumerism and all these advertisements and stressors, as we call them, around us trying to in effect, denature us uh, from who we are. So we do have to uh, understand that nature is the answer. And with that, you know, you are the answer as well. You're the question though, because mm -hmm. nature is the answer. You have to realize that for yourself. So you are the one at question. And that's why I have a show it's called you, Equ you are a question. <laughs> I, I love, um, I love puns. And so um, I really like the innate in nature. That's good. You know, let go in, go in nature and study what is innate. That's great. I love it. Um, Will. Yeah. To, uh, to simplify the profound intuition, um, you just look at the actual word it's insight. 
uh, to look at from within. So uh, I consider intuition as a seventh sense, the five senses, the sixth being memory, the seventh being intuition, and the eighth being imagination. Um, and, you know, your body is a receiver that filters in information all the time, um, not, just, not just the mind or the brain, you know, the heart and, and the guts as well. Uh, the whole body does that. So if you're a receiver, your intuition is... Uh, is the signal that's communicating to you. Um, and you're actually you can pull in information from what Rupert Seldrake calls the morphogenic field, which is the field of consciousness around us all the time. Actually, mammals can do this as well. That's why your dog knows when you know, you're going to be home in 15 minutes and he's sitting there right at the door waiting for you like clockwork. It happens all the time. They've done case studies with this. And uh, so they have an intuition that they're tapping in. So the science behind intuition is, is just um, it, you're just tapping into the morphogenic field is how I look at it. And of course, having a good brain balance and having your body or your receiver um, in a state of balance, that signal is going to be clearer and your intuition is going to be stronger and more accurate because you can't get false intuition, which is just you're not interpreting the the information correctly. So it's working against you. Um, so, yeah, intuition. That signal. Yeah. Yeah. It's like static or noise. Yeah. Sure. And dissonance. Yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll say one thing, too. The ego does not like the intuition. Because the intuition mm -hmm. connects us to, to source and unity, and the ego always wants to promote being separate. So the ego, that, that's why it's the gut feeling. Well, what's right after that? It's the ego saying, don't listen to it. <laughs> so, <laughs> just throw that little caveat in there. Yeah. Um, Ronnie, do you got anything to add? Hey, I don't, but uh, other than just... Uh, compliments to all of you uh will chris Corey, leslie aaron and nathan i just want to say thank you and uh you all have such powerful voices just like the sound of each one of your voices is just really powerful and uh again Corey, thank you for inviting me on here and Dude, I'm your just... voice is powerful they need, <laughs> they need to know more about you oh, ronnie God. fucking ross yeah <laughs> when i was a freshman hey, just so you guys know when i was a freshman in high school uh this girl that i became great friends with never dated or anything but um when i told her my name she asked me what my name is i said ronnie ross she was like ronnie fucking ross and like <laughs> literally from freshman year of high school till you know 10 15 20 years later People are still calling me Ronnie fucking. That's Ronnie. your middle name. I thought hey. you said Ronnie fucking rocks. <laughs> oh, no. Ronnie Ross rocks. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> That's awesome, brother. Thanks for coming on, man. Appreciate yeah. it. Yeah. Great talk. I, I just, here. I'm going to add one thing that's, that's kind of my pet peeve. And it's this like statement that, you know, protecting individual rights and protecting self is not selfish. Right, because I think there's this inversion going on in the world right now where it's like, think of other people, wear your mask, you know, you're being selfish. And it's been totally reversed and inverted as if like putting aside yourself is somehow caring about the, the whole, you know, but that, yes. and somehow I think mm. we really need to get across that, you know, protecting everyone's individual rights everyone's is not selfish including if you if i protect my own yeah you know? yeah well nothing can, to mention yeah go ahead Ron. Oh, I, there's just something just came to mind that i i've uh, been trying to tell as many people as possible the whole issue with the mask the right that is being taken away is your freedom to choose now mm. granted it's not because I don't know. I, I live in middle Tennessee outside of Nashville. Yeah. There's mask ma mandates everywhere. I still go wherever the fuck I want and never wear a mask and I've never been stopped. I know Costco is going to stop me. So I ended my membership there and I don't even deal with it. But so yeah, it, it, the freedom's not being taken away, but it's so obvious that it's heading that way. And it's if already, like. it's already that way in society. 2020, I have no friends anymore. They're, they're gone. The completely gone. 
from this whole thing because I love them so much. I will scream the truth down their throat and I will just keep, they're like, you keep wanting to have this conversation. I'm like, yeah, cause you don't get it yet. It's time to awaken you fool, you know? So in, and in saying that, that's just what I wanted to say is, and you got, feel free to use it. The freedom that is being taken away is your freedom to choose what you can or cannot put on your own body. That is immoral. You cannot start in immorality to gain morality because you will always be in an immoral act. Yeah. That's not how That's it, it works. That's the voice. You'd right think there. it'd be common sense. That's right. Nice. Yeah, it, it, he <laughs> thinks he doesn't have a voice. What is he talking about? Yeah, <laughs> that's it. That's There's it. no such thing as that's group rights. There's linear only progression. Rights. Linear progression. You must start with good to get good. You can't start with evil and get good. It doesn't work out yeah. that way. You know, it's people plain have, and simple. People have said I have ego for wanting to educate others about natural law. I'm like, really taking action what? is ego? Uh, you know, action is a left brain component and I have to merge that with intuition. At least I'm not basing, like I'm not baseless action. Like I'm saying- and Ego's it's a, not a dirty word. Yeah, it's a productive, e ego can be a productive tool. And if you didn't, ex if we didn't all accept ego, we wouldn't be sitting here, you know, like we, we you have, you're interacting with ego constantly. Your, your ego is constantly separating things. Like in order to have this comfort con conversation, I'm separating every, a lot of different things, a lot of different, you know, aware things that I could be aware of. Ego has to consolidate it. Okay. I'm in a conversation with some rad people and this is what I'm focusing on. You know, ego, that's a productive thing. It's like, and you have to accept that you do in order to even teach, you have to accept that, you know, and nowadays people don't like see to see people that, that know, stay, say that they know things. So that's your belief. No, 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 brother. I know it. You know what I mean? Like that's healthy ego. Like, you know, you, you have the right to be sovereign and, and that's yeah. it. And you we're know, willing you, you to share it. it away. It's and not they, like we're, no. we're me, um, in other people's Let me spaces. see if I could tie it together. Um, in the end, this is how I would kind of put it all together. Again, the tree of life, the all, the great everything, the universe, right? We are manifestations we grew out of. We're part of the all. We're part of God, right? And we've been given this opportunity to live in this existence and have this ego, to have this personality, to be a transmitter like um, Will was talking about, you know? So if you can imagine that you're a little radio, right? And there's a band and there's extremes on either end and you can be polarized to one side or the other. If you can turn your dial to the middle and touch back in to the universal, the all, then that's when you get in touch with your intuition. And that's mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. when you're connecting with God the all yeah. and when yeah. you can do that you can find the truth because that's what we are we're born of the truth and what we have is the choice like ronnie okay. said <laughs> right like it. perfect nice. the intuitive and the ego conscience. hates that the ego hates absolutes but that is the truth brother <laughs> <laughs> it's our conscience that's, that's the opportunity we have to experience here so to let's suppress our make the most of it We'd be suppressing nature to suppress our, our human natural selves, our conscience to make decisions. It's not even a whether of natural law, morality or not. It's suppressing the conscience, suppressing the ability, the simple ability to be human, the simple ability to live. To live Tapestry to and the branches of the tree and the leaves and the blossoms and the flowers, like we are each a part of that, you know, making this tree. Even the shape right now in our uh, pictures. <laughs> yeah, <love> it. <laughs> well it's been a great great conversation i feel like we're all just getting fired up we want to keep going but i do want to bring this one to a close because um keep it within a time limit where people can actually sit down and digest it and um we'll keep going in in um not next week but the week after we'll do this again and hopefully um whoever can come back come back i'm really glad you all came and i'm i'm inspired Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. Thank you. It was a lot Thanks of fun. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you Appreciate it. Right.